Hey guys, Chad Robbins here with Robbins Plastic Surgery. We're doing the weekly skinny. This week, it's gonna be on a breast lift. And the questions we get asked commonly are, what kind of breast lifts are there? Which ones apply to me? The other question that is in this category, we get asked all the time, is if I get a larger implant, won't that lift the breast? And we'll get to that in just a minute. So we'll get to the first questions, what, other, what types of breast lifts are there? And so a lot of, our decision making that goes into breast lifts has to do with how droopy you are. Of course, we've talked some about droopiness and how to determine uh, which level you are on the droopiness scale, level zero, one, two, or three. And, uh, and that's determined again by the nipple and the relationship of the nipple to the crease underneath your breast. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this quickly. This is something I think I can illustrate really well. If your nipple is level one droopiness, that's just a little bit of droopiness. This of course is what we say no droopiness and we're gonna show you how to make this side look like that side. So one of the things we do is called a circum areolar lift or a peri areolar lift. And that's a lift where the scar is just around the areola. The way we do that is by taking out skin above the areola and this is a circular scar. And when we close this up, we close, we close it with a stitch that's like the spokes of a wheel. And that stitch, as it slides through there and cinches it all up together, brings the nipple up into the position like that. So that's called a circumareolar lift. And when we do that, we end up with a, a nipple that's up here and the scar is just around the nipple. So that is one type of breast lift. Another type that we see commonly and use commonly is a vertical. So if say the nipple is a little droopier down here somewhere, uh, we're able to, again, we wanna get the nipple to that position. So we do a larger version of this only. We bring it down like that. I don't know if you can see that very well. Sometimes this is called a keyhole or a lollipop where we bring these two points together and that becomes the point right here. And then this point comes up. So you end up with a vertical scar here and of course a circumareola scar here. Um, again, this does not have a scar underneath the breast. One of the most common types of lifts though is for women who are grade two or grade three ptosis, that's grade two or three droopiness where the nipple is at or down below the crease, so the nipple is down here somewhere, and you want to get it up there. So the way to do that is to make our incisions or cuts like this, and then we remove all the skin from the bottom of the breast, and we take this nipple and areola and we preserve it on a peninsula of tissue, and so we bring this point and this point together, becomes that point, and then we rotate this up and make a new hole for it to come through there. I hope that makes sense to you. Those are three of the most commonly used types of breast lifts. Whether one is applicable to you versus another uh, depends on how droopy you are. And back to that question about the size of the implant. Sure, if you're gonna take a pillow, or I like to use the analogy of a pillow that's kind of saggy and loose and put more stuffing in it, yeah, it does plump it up and stuff it out but you're not gonna get any appreciable lift out of that. Only a small amount of lift. And that's really for women who have this sort of zero to grade one toast. It's just a very little amount, small amount of droopiness. Uh, can you do that to achieve uh, a lift effect? Um, hope that answers your question. We look forward to seeing you again soon.